Yeah, you, you can ask questions. I have no opening statement, no. Nothing to really make a statement about. If I told you on the day that Zach Anikstead went down, whenever that was, July 31st, August 1st, August 2nd, that the season would unfold the way it did to win the amount of games you do 11, to win a New Year's Day bowl game, what, what would you have told me? It was definitely a possibility. Uh, just because of the, the character of this football team. You know, you knew, we knew what we had in January. And whether we stayed healthy, didn't stay healthy, we knew we had some type of depth. Um, we knew that this team was going to be, I think, um, they believed in themselves way more than what people were going to predict them being. And then when you went through the season and went through spring ball and you went through the beginning, you, you saw that this team had something really special. Um, now, to sit there and say, yeah, I guarantee they'll win 11 games, I don't know if you necessarily think that way, but you knew this team had a chance to be really successful and to become whatever they wanted to become. And we're that close from winning the West, right, in terms of representing us in Indianapolis. Uh, but they end up with 11 wins, which, you know, hasn't happened since 1904. So feather in their cap. It was a tremendous year. Um, it's been hard to put it to bed just because when you play in 2020 in your bowl game, it's really next year already, and you're already on to the next year. So it kind of all runs together. What kinds of benefits? Yeah, first of all, uh, anytime players are leaving early, right, early, your program, uh, I think that's a benefit, and that shows the development and the rapid development you can have within your program. We're going to have to get used to this with a lot of the players that we have, and I think that shows the health of the program, that you're able to develop pro players really quickly, uh, that the NFL wants them. Same thing as you develop coaches and people take coaches. You want them to continue to move on for their hopes, dreams, and aspirations, just like our players. But with Antoine, don't forget, he's a senior. He's a four-year player, right, technically. And we knew that we had him for two years, possibly. There was no way. Not any one of you thought we were going to get him for two more. One more, maybe. But I think when you went through the season of what he was able to accomplish, I think he looked at it like, what else, have, what else could I have accomplished here? Uh, I think it's, it's time to turn the page. And then when you look at Carter Coughlin and Thomas Barber and all of his roommates, Kamal Martin, they're all leaving. And I think it was time for him to be able to move on. And we support him either way, whether they stay or whether they go. We do everything we can to educate them through the NFL process. And then they make the best decision for them. And we're behind them 100%. What kinds of benefits have you seen on the recruiting trail already following the Outback win and just those kinds of things? Well, I think that people know who we are nationwide now. I think Minnesota's on a national map, uh, but that doesn't mean just because you win a few games doesn't mean that you completely change your own recruiting philosophy. We have a certain player we recruit. We have a certain student athlete we recruit. That will never stop. Remember, we have five four-star players on this football team and that won 11 games, right? And so we don't need, you know, 50 four-star recruits to say we are going to win 11 again. We just need the right players inside our program and the right people inside our program to sustain that cultural sustainability over wins over a long period of time. And are you going to get more talented players? Yes, but you can't step away from your actual cultural beliefs. Well, first of all, you, you know, Kirk Sorocco did a great job here. Uh, he's a great friend of mine, seven years. We've worked together, and we, I knew it'd end at some point, whether he retired soon or whether he went on to something else. Um, we've talked about that numerous times. Being from Pennsylvania, uh, I can see exactly why he left and what he wanted to do for the final years of his career, and I've got um, – I've got nothing but admiration for him and what he was able to accomplish here, and not alone that, but Western Michigan, what he was able to do for our program. Uh, but I think change is really healthy, and I think what we showed in the bowl game is not one, no, no one person's bigger than the team, whether that's the head coach, coordinator, one player, one coach, it doesn't matter. The culture's the culture. We all work for the culture. We all thrive to make the culture better. And we gave Matt Simon those reins. I thought he did an absolutely an absolute elite job at what he was what he was brought here to do and he's developing at a rapid rate he's becoming a tremendous football coach not only just a position coach but seeing the whole picture and I thought he proved that in the bowl game and so I thought he definitely deserved the ability to be the co-coordinator what I wanted to do to, was bring Mike Sanford in here uh, to coach the quarterbacks and obviously be the offensive coordinator but I love the coordinator being in charge of the quarterbacks and Mike Sanford brings a wealth of knowledge um, in terms of the quarterback position, offensive coordinator um, type experience, playing at Boise State with the success they had, then coordinating at Boise State with the success they had, then Notre Dame, then already being a young head coach, which I know what it's like. So does he. It's nice to have that person on your staff. 
then going to Utah State now here, and he's only 37 years old. And you, you see that whole resume, and you just you, – you can't wait to work with somebody like that. We've known each other five or six years, been really close, really good friends. Uh, and I knew it was only a matter of time where I could hire him, just had to have the opportunity because he's way beyond being a position coach now. So it had to be the right time, right fit. And uh, I love his passion, his energy, the way he recruits. He's high energy. Uh, he cares, high character individual. Uh, spiritual life very important to him. Uh, and I can't wait for our players to get around him because his energy is infectious. Do you see a lot of similarities with him and uh, it, You know, it's hard when you're comparing someone to yourself, saying, well, that person's like me. I mean, that sounds a little narcissistic uh, and egotistical a little bit, so I'll stay away from that. Uh, but I will say that there are some parallels based on age, based on uh, being able to have, I guess, head coaching success at a young age or, or coaching success at a young age, which I think is very difficult to handle in, in different ways. But he's been a head coach. He's been a coordinator. Uh, he's been hired. He's had big, high-profile jobs. He's been fired before. Uh, I think those are critical attributes that you look for when you're hiring somebody in this type of program uh, to be able to handle all the things he's going to be able to have. But he is, has been a head coach. It's nice to be able to have a person like that, uh, to be able to bounce things off of when you are having maybe those head coach days uh, that you need a head coach to give you advice. And instead of maybe calling somebody on the phone, I can just walk down the hallway and ask now uh, and be able to be open to different different things like that. But the energy, the passion, uh, the charisma, uh, the uh, the education in terms of how he teaches, the recruiting. I think we both have a passion for young people, a passion for education, a passion for being in this profession for all the right reasons. I think we share that for sure. You guys, when you guys first met in Boise, when I was at 15, um, what was your first impression of him? What did you guys kind of go over? Oh, you could tell. I think he was one of the hottest coordinators in the country at that point. We all get labeled at some point, right? People put labels on all of us. Um, you know, sooner or later, I won't be the young head coach anymore at some point. But when you look at the organization of his practices, though, how, how hard they practiced, um, the ability, you could see the relationships between him and his quarterbacks uh, and the way that his offenses were well organized, well detailed, um, the, the efficiency of the offense, and everybody was on one page. And I think that's critical when you go watch uh, practices is there's a coordinator in charge or is it just the head coach uh, or is nobody in charge? It's just kind of the players kind of running everything. And you saw complete command from him at a very early age. And that, that's, that's hard to ignore. And you can see it right away when you see it. How, how is Zach coming along? What's the plan for Zach moving forward? Well, I mean, Zach's coming along really well. He's, he's getting healthy. He's already throwing the football. I mean, I'd say he's probably a week away from actually being 100%. I know he's chomping at the bit to get back as fast as he can. And just like all of our quarterbacks, they're all going to bring in a tremendous amount of value to this football program. And, and when you look at Zach, had had the starting job last year, right, or the year before that, he gets hurt, Tanner comes in, then they go through a competition, he gets hurt again. The, the, the way that it is these days, it's, it's almost like people don't want to just be the backup anymore or be number two or be, uh, I'm number one, but when is my opportunity going to come? If I get hurt, what happens after that? My message to our quarterbacks is stay in the moment, compete, do everything you can to be the number one quarterback, and we're going to have competition at every position. Well, he's going to have to step up. You know, I think we saw last year he was able to come along very early at a very rapid rate. Uh, he made a lot of plays for us. But then at some point, everybody hits that freshman wall, and I thought he hit it, uh, was able to kind of hit it. And then we talked before where you hit it and you slide down it like an egg, or you hit it and then you burst through it and get to the next wall and burst through it. I think he did a combination of both of those. But with the rapid rate of his development in year one with Joe harris Simiak, and now his ability to say, okay, I, I have to be a performer now, not just on special teams, but I'm going to have to step in that role. And then you bring in three or four freshmen at the safety position that are going to have to contribute. I think that brings a lot of excitement to that position. It brings a lot of competition and hopefully brings the level of performance up in everybody. Do you have a potential timeline you're looking for for the open D-line coach slot? And how important is it that they stay more than one year? Well, I, again, I, I'm, not, I'm not really big on the importance of guys staying one year, two years. What's the important amount of time to stay? What's the appropriate amount of time to stay? That's not for me to judge. My job is to hire the best people we possibly can, um, you know, squeeze all the blood from the orange that we possibly can, all the juice from the orange, and just see what we can get out of everybody that adds value to the program, and then go from there. 
But I, I'm not here to sit there and say, okay, you, I'm hiring you. You've got to stay here five years. Uh, that's not what we're here to do. We're going to hire the best